Hi, and welcome to a project where success has eluded me for a few years until I cut my losses, changed the project's scope entirely, and then noticed a dumb mistake two years later after the fact. This is a project that was so deceptively simple, I was certain to make mistakes, and I did. But enough about the pep talk, let's make a Sega Genesis controller from scratch. This is a humbling project. It's not too technical because we're simply reverse engineering the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive controller. We're just copying existing work, which all that requires is probing from point to point and checking for continuity and retracing all the connections until we reverse engineer what's connected to what. So when you do that, you should get something like this. The heart of this controller is the 74157 multiplexer. The core function of this is to take two inputs and encode them into one. And if we utilize the entire chip, we can encode eight signals down to four, which takes all the inputs on the Genesis controller, up, down, left, right, A, B, C, and start, and encodes them into four signals. And that's great for if you have to fit all those signals into a DB9 cable. A Sega Genesis controller extension cable is serving as the cord between the system and the controller PCB in this project. So anyway, I made this and when I was done, the controller only half worked, and I couldn't figure it out for a long time, so I abandoned this project a few years ago. It was only recently until I picked it back up again. And I mean, when I left off, I was absolutely stumped. I think I retraced the circuit three or four times, and it was something that was so simple, it just got the best of me because I was blind to my own mistakes. Uh, so the main issue was this G and ground net that I created, and it Part of that is just the inexperience I had with EagleCAD and just not picking up on some of the common practices with libraries and how the naming system worked for just marking pins. So anyway, the whole point was this: these are grounds and they should be connected together and they weren't. So all it takes is a simple bodge wire to fix that. You'll notice on the board there's screw terminals and those were planned as breakouts such that this PCB would aid to build a like Sega Genesis fight stick or full-size arcade controller. And with the Sega Astro City Mini Arcade out, I mocked up some artwork and made this frame from like a 2x4 so it could fit the control panel I designed for my other arcades. And there we go. I mean, we've put together a authentic hardware-based and like fully OEM compatible fight stick or three-button arcade controller. Now the six button is a little bit more complex. I don't have one of those controllers to reverse engineer. I think someone's already done a lot of that reverse engineering work, uh, but that's for another day. Okay, well, there's still more to talk about this project. The original scope of this was to actually make a modification for the OEM three button controller. And that was to replace the button pads with clicky tactile buttons. And the whole point is, I always thought the original Sega Genesis controller was a little bit mushy, so it'd be nice to make it like some modern equivalent clicky buttons, kind of how like the Xbox controller and a lot of the Nintendo 3DS and 2DS D-pads feel. So to do that, I did have to make a one-to-one -one layout of the controller, which required a lot of work getting all the mounting holes lined up, and I did a lot of back and forth, like taking this, exporting the file, cutting out on a laser cutter, and just testing all that mechanical mounting dimensions. But when it came to making the PCB, the actual like square inch or surface area of this controller was super cost prohibitive. It was just really not worth the project seeing it all the way through. So that basically killed the drive. That's some background of how this project kind of evolved from what should have been a PCB and controller in one that really just turned out to a breakout PCB, but it always felt unfinished because I never was able to satisfy that original controller kind of thing. So I wanted a PCB that would be a replacement Sega Genesis controller on its own, but still wanted something that felt comfortable in the hands, and that was something I had to find a solution for. So I ate a slice of humble pie that has kind of served me in many projects. I'm not gonna try and redesign or make a case for this controller. So what can I use off the shelf instead to serve as like a comfortable enclosure or case? So I have to warn you, this might upset some viewers. This is surprisingly comfortable. It also might be a desecration itself, but I can assure you it's not as bad as my original intent. I think these cartridges feel better from a size and ergonomic standpoint, but there are some lines that we just don't cross. Well, anyway, the last redesign of this PCB fixed the netless error that plagued me for so long, 
And that was just making sure all the ground nets are labeled exactly the same. I added the mounting hold so this would fit into any Sega OEM cartridge shell and squeeze things in until I reached a pretty good level of satisfaction. You still have to drill the holes for the push buttons and the alignment for this is a bit of a chore. I came close to designing the back half of the shell with the button holes cut out, but again, losing the scope of things here, I just scrapped that and decided to finish this project. Sometimes you just have to come to terms when a project is done, whether the outcome was a success or it was really just experience that you can chalk up for the next project. So this project is done, though it's not the original scope, it did come back from the dead with some improvements. You can apply these techniques to build your own NES or Super NES controllers, probing point to point for continuity and retracing all the connections until you reverse engineer what's connected to what. Both of those Nintendo controllers revolve around a simple IC that you can still find today. It just might be new old stock. So building one from scratch is within reach, and that's if you don't want to sacrifice an existing controller for your arcade project in the first place. And the whole point of this is to preserve the limited supply of OEM equipment that, that's out there and make something new. So you might not know it, but we're actually finally done with all these separate hurdles and projects it takes to build a 100% authentic Sega Genesis or Mega Drive arcade. I've reverse engineered the controller PCB to build an arcade control panel, which I've shown you already. We've also RGB modded a consumer TV to accept the Sega Genesis best native video output signal, and that's RGB. And I've also made my own EEPROM cartridges, so this arcade can have any ROM hack or original game running on real hardware, probably except for virtual racing. And we've also tested a two-thirds scale arcade cabinet to put all these things together. So I guess it's time to get to work on this project. Thanks for watching.